Hi everyone, so I thought I would talk about my go-to art supplies, my favorite art supplies, the art supplies I can't live without, and all the things that I rely on on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm making art. And most of these are pretty simple, but I consider them staples of mine, so they're kind of like the basic things I always need. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was this. And this is a Stedler Mars Technico lead holder, and it holds two millimeter lead inside of it. And I actually put 2B lead because I liked lead to be slightly softer than regular HB lead or like 2H lead. And this is such a useful art supply because it's extendable. So it's like a mechanical pencil, but for thicker lead. It's basically like having the same thickness as like a regular pencil, but you don't have to sharpen it. And if you want to sharpen it, you actually can because the back of it is a sharpener and you can just put it on the end and twist it and it sharpens. But if you don't mind having a blunt end, I usually don't sharpen mine that much unless I need a bit more precision, then it's perfect. And also just a regular mechanical pencil. This is just from the dollar store. It's like Papermate brand. Um, I bought these like four years ago, three years ago, and I have so many of them and I just put my own lead inside. I put this lead, it's um, just HB lead, black lead, uh, Pentel high polymer super, I don't know, it's 0.7 millimeters because I just prefer softer, darker lead to harder lead, but nothing too dark. Um, I like it to be sort of in between very dark and regular HB. So these are my absolute favorite sketching materials. I highly recommend you buy the Mars Technico if you want a thick mechanical pencil. It's just great. It's kind of an expensive price. It's like about $10 for the lead holder. But once you buy that, you just buy the refills and it's not that expensive. Another one of my favorite pencils is this, and I've been working on my backpack animal zine over the last couple of day of weeks, and recently I finished doing all the lines, and I used this for it. And it is a Prismacolor color race in the color terracotta, which is a erasable, slightly erasable, doesn't erase fully, pencil crayon. And I like to do my lines in pencil because it's a lot softer than ink, it's not as permanent, you can still, like, it's a bit more forgiving and it just makes your whole illustration look a lot softer. And doing it with brown actually gives it an even more, even more of a softness to it. And since this isn't too light and it's not too dark, it isn't that permanent of a color. So most of your watercolor washes can actually cover this and it's not really set in stone. So that's why I really like the terracotta color race. And another one that I like is the Scarlet Red because it's a warm red and I like it for sketching. And then over top of the red you can do pencil sketches also. Another sort of utensil is the Uniball Signo white gel pen and I think this is a really good gel pen. Um, it's on the slightly pricier side but not really because at Michael's it's overpriced but if you buy it at Michael's you can use a coupon and get it for a pretty okay deal. And this is just good for adding highlights to things and adding pure white small details. I stopped using these for a really long time because I started to overuse them and I just ran out of all of mine and they started to dry up and I just stopped using them. And then I recently kind of like rediscovered how useful they are and I know how to not overdo it with them now and I can use it in a way that benefits my art and not destroys it because it's really easy to overdo it with a white gel pen. So the Uniball Signo in the color white is a really good gel pen and you've probably heard about it before because a lot of people use it and it's pretty good. Now another alternative to that is the white Posca pen. I think this is the mid range size like there's like broad tip, fine tip and Maybe this is medium, maybe this is broad, I don't know what size it is exactly, but it's basically like a thicker white, uh, it's like a thicker version of the gel pen basically, but it's a paint marker, so you can do even bigger white areas and add highlights on top of stuff, and it's just really good if you don't feel like breaking out your a bunch of white paint, it's just a lot easier to take out a pen and put white down with the pen instead of paint. Now the next thing I want to talk about were was brushes. And I mainly use the Zen Royal and Langnickel brushes. Um, I use these mostly because I can find them really easily at my local art store. And they're pretty inexpensive and they're usually on sale. And they're just a go-to brand that I know can get the job done. And they don't really fray that much over time. 
um, I'm pretty g gentle with them, I think. I try to treat them nicely because I don't like to buy new brushes all the time, but I do end up destroying most of my brushes. I even have these. So I have tons of different sizes. They come in all shapes and sizes, and I would recommend this brand if you're just looking for something that's decent and not too expensive. Um, they're really good for watercolor. I know there's probably better deals out there or better um, like brands, but this is just what I found that works and it's easy for me to buy. I don't just use Zen brushes. I have some like knockoffs um, and also some like Michaels ones and some cheapies. I even have this nice one that someone sent me in the mail. It feels really nice to hold. It's the Da Vinci Cosmotop Spin uh, size 4 and this is a really really nice brush. I like using it a lot. Um, this one, I usually use the more synthetic ones for gouache, like the stiffer brushes. So I also just use like random assortment, but my go-to watercolor ones are the Zen brushes. Now my favorite eraser is the, the Stedler Mars Plastic Eraser, and this is a extendable eraser or a mechanical eraser if you prefer to call it that, and or a click eraser. There's lots of different names, but you can find these in all different kinds of brands and shapes and sizes, but this is the one that I like. Um, it just allows you to basically have like the size of a pencil eraser in an infinite stick that you can keep clicking up and you never run out. And it's good for erasing fine details. And for, well, it's just a pretty good eraser. Like the eraser on its own is pretty good and you can erase fine details with it. And it lasts a really long time because you're not going to burn through a long piece of eraser. I think it's just a really good tool to have. It's a really good a really good practical tool and I know a lot of people have these. You can even get thinner ones if you erase like really fine details, but this one works for me. It'd be cool if they came in other colors besides blue, that would actually be really cool. So another thing that I didn't have for the longest time and I recently got and it's so useful is an X-Acto knife or a craft knife and this is really really useful for sharpening pencils because if you sharpen them with a sharpener you're wasting a lot of the lead. It's kind of um, getting shaved off by the sharpener and this allows you to kind of prolong the life of your pencil because it's, you're less likely to break off the lead when you're sharpening it and you can just get it to a really fine point and make most of the lead um, taper off into a fine point and make it really like really long um, and that can just allow you to go longer in between sharpenings and just control the shape of your pencil better and also this is useful for cutting paper and illustration board and I think it's just a good staple to have. I didn't have this for the longest time and I'm really glad I have it now. It was like a dollar or two dollars, so they're really inexpensive. Now my go-to brand of gouache is the Holbein Artist Gouache, and it actually has two different packagings now. I've only ever seen these, um, but now I've seen these, and I like the primary set in particular, the cyan, yellow, and magenta, because they're just perfect colors, basically. Um, you can make any color you want from those three colors and black and white. So I would definitely recommend that mixing set of gouache if you're looking for some nice gouache to, uh, primaries. They stopped selling the set for a while and then I found it on Jackson's Art Supplies so I don't know if it's discontinued or if they're rebranding or repackaging stuff, but the uh, cyan, yellow, and magenta, white and black, Holbein Artist Gouache is some of my favorite gouache. As for watercolor, I love the Shinhan Professional Watercolors and the Schmincke Horadam watercolors. Um, these are, well, these are much more expensive than the Shinhan ones. The Shinhan ones are really good budget watercolors, but they're, they still perform really nicely. And the Shinhan ones are just really, really nice quality. Um, they're really up there in terms of quality. They tend to bleed into each other. The colors like to spread more than these. Um, so they're useful for different things and I just like using both of them. I thought I would fully switch to these, but I still enjoy using the Shinhan ones, so I would recommend either. The Shinhan ones are more budget friendly and you get a really big tube, which I love. You can also get a bigger tube in these, but they're like $15, so it's a bit more expensive. Another really great tool is a kneaded eraser, and if you watch Drawing with Waffles, you'll see her use this a lot. Um, it's basically a stretchy eraser and it's good for lightening sketches and for having uh, shaving free erasing, so it doesn't leave any dust behind and it just picks up the pigment onto the eraser and it's self-cleaning. This used to be bright blue, believe it or not. It might have even been pink. I don't know which color, but it was like neon bright blue or pink and now it is this color, but it's still good to use for a while. And I like to use it most for rolling over sketches to lighten them. I think that is a really 
um, nice way of using them. It doesn't uh, rip up the paper like a normal eraser would. And it's just a really good tool to have. It allows you to erase more gently, which is, which is good. And the one I have is a Fabric Castell art eraser. <laughs> and it comes in a little case. It's important to keep it in a case or else it'll get really hairy and it'll dry out and it will just not be fun to use. So keep it in a case. It prolongs the life. Now my favorite watercolor paper is the Arches Hot Pressed paper. It is 140 pounds, 300, 300 GSM, and I use this for all my finished illustrations. It's good for basically any media, watercolor, gouache, pencil, ink, anything, basically. It's a very smooth surface because it's hot pressed, and because it's smooth, I can use pencil on it, which is what I pretty much use with everything. I can't really make an illustration without using pencil. I need to get some sor sort of fine lines and like energetic lines that I can't really get with regular paint or other supplies. So this paper is really, really good. I highly recommend it. Also, just like this isn't an art supply, but I use coasters on my desk to protect the surface. I never used coasters before, but I always have some kind of drink beside me. And this is a coaster of my dog and I keep it and I put my like iced coffee on it, which sweats and leaves a puddle of water or my really hot teas. And it works really well. So make sure you have a coaster because it'll protect your work surface. Now, another go-to art supply is a big watercolor palette or a big palette in general because you can just you just have so much mixing area you, you're never going to run out of space well you do eventually but i used to think i could just use small palettes but once i got a big palette i can't really turn back um it's just it's so luxurious to have the space and it's actually not that expensive i'll put a link where i bought mine um this exact palette and you just put your colors into the wells and it it works. It's actually really easy to clean as well. The water beads off of it at first, but eventually it gets enough scratch and wear into it that it starts to kind of pool more rather than beat up. So I love big palettes. <laughs> Something I don't think I've ever talked about is this brush. And I use this brush to clean eraser shavings off of things, to dust off electronics, um, just to like sweep little bits off of my paintings so I don't have to like brush my hand against it and get all my like skin oils onto the illustration. So I actually used this to paint once, um, black I think, but I cleaned it and now I only use it to clean stuff off and to sweep little bits and eraser shavings and dust off of stuff. So I highly recommend you get one of these if you don't have them. Um, once you get one you'll be missing it when you can't find it. It's just become such a staple for me. So. And lastly, something that you probably have seen all over the place is the Illo sketchbook. I love this sketchbook. It's such a nice sketchbook. It's square format. I filled one of them and now I'm halfway through this one. I got it for Christmas um, last year. I got two of them. And it's just such a nice sketchbook. I hope to ask for more of them for Christmas this year because I can't really justify buying a sketchbook this expensive for myself. It's not that expensive. It's just hard to get it to Canada. It's expensive to ship it. Um, but it's smooth paper, it takes any medium pretty much. There's a pocket, there's a closure, and there's even a ribbon to mark where you are. So it's basically, in my mind, the perfect sketchbook for me. I just really like it a lot. I love square format things. I just really enjoy that aspect ratio. So I really hope you enjoyed seeing all my go-to art supplies, and let me know what your go-to art supplies are in the comments. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.